uh, your uh, I can say um, ABAP environment for your backend development. So ultimately, what this system will do is this will ultimately give you an O data service. This will ultimately give you a um, service endpoint. And this service endpoint will be consumed by your UI application over here. And finally, what you are going to do is first and foremost thing, you might have already deployed this service by if you see in last session or I can say in webinar, we already created a service definition service binding. So this particular binding that we created uh, is ultimately going to create a service. That service is going to be consumed by UI development. And this UI application is something that we are going to deploy. The moment you deploy it, it will create a Fiori application and that particular Fiori application we would be binding on my portal. So your end user, from your end user's perspective, what all thing he'll have? Your end user is not required to install your Eclipse. He is not required to install BS. All he is required to know is the URL for your launchpad. Or I can say a portal, cloud portal. You can uh, okay. you you might also have seen a launchpad, right? So on the launchpad, a tile will get created and a tile will be nothing but your UI application, which will internally connect to this. So at end of okay. the day for your end user, the only thing that will going that is going to change is from your SAP GUI, he'll move to the SAP Fury. That's all. In okay. backend, okay. whatever we'll technology. Back for... Yeah, definitely. He is we'll not worried about any code. code. UI, uh, for... UI related code, I mean. So, this, uh, so I'll I, so first our initial focus, our initial focus will be to uh, ultimately understand the uh, wrap all its architecture. We would be generating and uh, working with the application in a preview mode. So this will be our initial focus. Somewhere towards the end of the session, I guess uh, towards the end, I'll help you connect the end to end over here where we would be creating a simplest application by consuming the OData service that we created. And there you would be able to see our first application getting deployed and available on the launchpad. So that's that will be somewhere towards the end. But yeah, to answer your question, yes, we'll be doing it. So uh, what you're saying is that going forward, most of the ABAP development would be uh, targeted towards an OData service. We have to Definitely. do the backend development and there will be an OData service and then uh, the UI people will look at the OData service and do whatever they want to do. Yeah, in a way, yes. Another thing will be using the wrap based development. If you mm -hmm. see, you are ultimately getting converted to a full stack. In a way, if you see, because if you see, uh, I mm -hmm. I think you guys remember, I guess most of you were there while we did this particular development. I'll just like, open this. It would ultimately allow me okay. to just log in once. Okay. okay, so we already connect created a normal travel service, right? So what you might have seen is that I do have a UR, uh, UI service which is available and I was able to do the preview. Though I did not write any short of a uh, UI code, but your UI preview was available. But if you just go over here, if you just do the application preview. Okay, so you I guess if I remember, I have seen all of most of your name while you were on the, I can say webinar, but just to Actually, be on the same like right towards the end of that. Uh, no, no issues, no issues. I'll just ultimately there are only two objects just to make it simple. I had kept only a couple of objects over there. OK, so if you see we uh, consumed a table called uh, travel table. OK, we created a root view entity and this was my interface view. Purpose was for a reusable aspect post which we created a consumption view. This is going to be going to be my front face using which my OData service gets created and it will always be a projection view. So if you see over here, here you would see that as select from, but on the last view, which is a C view consumption view, you will never see as select. You will always see as projection because it's a projection view. And here for us to get the transactional behavior, you have to specify provider contract transactional query. This is something that we will be using further. But if you don't write this, you would get a warning. You won't get an error, but we are trying to work in a way that we are not having any warning as much as possible. So that's where we created as uh, this projection view. And this projection view is something that we expose. We never expose the I view or the table. So if you see the service definition that we created, 
we expose the sea view that we created over here and we are able to see the travel. Now of, over here, we uh, consume this service definition that we created, created a service binding over here. And as you can see, this service URL will ultimately show me the metadata. So if I just go over here, metadata over here, you will see that, okay, I do have a entity called travel type, which is having a primary key called travel ID. How it is uh, defining that? Because we specified this travel ID as a key over here and the rest of the property, whatever we specified, we are able to see the OData service over here. As we created the service binding within OData 2.0, we are able to see the uh, entity over here with the same name. Okay. Now, uh, what we did is we never ask any UI developer to do anything over here, right? We are able to see a plain application. But if you see, if I just go over here and I say that I want to create some sort of a column over here, from the backend side, you would be developing a, um, I can say, set of columns and everything you need. So for example, you would say UI.line item. So we'll be seeing all these annotations, uh, what all things are required. So if you see, this is a CDS view. So for most of you, or let's just say for uh, the one who have not worked on CDS that extensively, SAP is uh, giving a set of libraries in CDS uh, in the term of annotations. So these for access control authorization, these for end user, same way for UI designing, there are annotation which are coming with a namespace. So anything starts with at the rate is annotation. You are saying UI and I want to create a column. There comes the annotation called line item. You will say position and you would be defining that this should be available on my first one. Then why did I specify 10? Because it, this does not, it does not specify the position as in like at what position it will be. Should it be at the 10th position? No. When I say 10 and when I say, uh, for example, 20 over here, okay, it means that this particular position is greater than this. It means if I do have 10, 20, but here I do have, for example, 5 then it will short it ascending and it would say it would say that customer id should be available first then the travel id and then the agency id so this is just sequencing based on the ascending order in order for us to give the option tomorrow for example i have write a uh, 1000 10 to 1000 ui line item and i want to add one more column internally okay then will i have a option to add a column in between or do i have to do a rearrangement so if you would have write one, two, three, then you would be stuck. I cannot add any column in between, but here I do have option of adding 10 columns in between. That's why SAP always says give the numbers in form of a uh, it multiple of 10. So here I just wrote it like this. And here, if you see, I'll just add only this column. For example, these are the column which I'm not showing by default. The moment I activate this, I don't have any UI developer or any UI project created separately. But as I wrote UI annotation over here, if I just go back and I just start refreshing this, as you can see, system just generated those five columns for me. Even without me asking the system to do that, system is allowing me to um, ultimately create those columns. If I just go one more uh, level up, okay, if I just say, that I want to have a couple of more fields. So for example, I want to give some sort of uh, uh, filters. I'll just say selection field, position 10, position 20, just two, okay. And it will create the filters as well. Now, how, how it will be advantageous? So it means you are doing the UI designing on your side. Definitely, I cannot hand over this URL to my end user. But while you're, if you see, I just started getting two filters as well. The moment I say activate, sorry, I, the moment I say go, I am getting this. Now, if I just say that I want to get uh, the record which are on a particular date, I can filter that as well and it will work. So for example, if I just say it's equal to 5th of November only, for example, No, oh, this is 5th of Jan. That's why the system uh, did not uh, allow me. I'll just say 5th November. What was the date? Fifth November 2022 it was. 
OK, so I just got all the record which are only for the 5th of November. And here if I say no, I want to also get the end date which are on 3rd of September 2023. OK, here I only get the record which are relevant. Now how the system is doing this? Because even without you knowing it, you are doing certain stuff for example, you just implemented a, a filter operations like in SAGW gateway service. You have to write that explicitly. But here if you see, I'll just say. Inspect OK, and the moment you. This is my element. This is my console sources network. OK, over here. Uh, here, if I just go over here, I guess it is just some short of a screen service. If I just say go over here, if you see a batch call got created and it is ultimately triggering the filter calls and everything. OK, I'll just go here and say. Oh, I just opened one, so I just trigger a query call. Uh, I'll just trigger a read call. I'll just go back. I was willing to click on this go. Yeah, here it is. So if you see the travel and it just say skip top dollar filter, this equal to start date is this end date is this and give me the set of data by dollar select and everything. Earlier in gateway, you were writing single single line of code for that first. Second, here the moment you are doing this, your system uh, creates those columns by default. So now going forward while your end uh, while your UI developer is asking you like I want to create a UI application, please provide me the O data endpoint. You will provide him this. So this is going to be your endpoint which is connected to your this particular service. OK, and the moment you provide this even without him writing any code to display the column just because of the metadata extension, thus just because of the UI annotation you provided over here, the moment very first time they uh, create the project, these columns and filters will start appearing by default. OK, so now if you just connect the dots that for a UI developer. If he is working, yeah, I guess this is also one of the thing. If he is working on the Fury elements based applications, if your user's requirement is creating columns, filters, and there are plenty more things, okay, this, those can be achieved by using Fury annotations, and that's something we will also be learning. Then your UI developer is not required to write e anything specifically. All he is going to do is he is just going to consume your uh, service and going to create a project, and that's all. And your UI project will be up and running. Now, this is something that you are doing from backend. You enrich it with a UI annotation. Now, what is the thing which is remaining in order for you to convert to a UI developer as well? Nothing. I guess it's just a business application studio or web SAP web ID full stack. You should be knowing how you can create the project. And you can take your first step. In the UI development world, OK, so ultimately you can be a full stack developer going forward the moment you are into SAP wrap. Because this is just a read only application I'm talking about going forward, enabling disabling field, putting the validation, assigning it to a relevant field. Everything and anything can be handled by the backend. On the UI set, does this just the minimum setup and some sort of JavaScript if you are willing to also go in that direction? But that's something that won't be our focus over here. But you can take your first step toward the UI development. That's where rep is actually the new glory, I guess, going forward. OK. Uh, I cannot hear you clearly. Uh, you Where did you get that URL form? You created the CDS view. And, I create, uh, so uh, just to go one more step back, there is a, a CDS view, which is an I view I created. And even to go one more mm -hmm. step back, I'll just say, uh, OK, 
that's all we I guess that's all where everything just started, right? right. So this is where everything just started from. 